Hello, welcome to another episode of Sip Song. So instead of featuring wine, sake, or spirits today, I am featuring my favorite purveyor of Japanese tea called Ipoto Tea Company. They're located in the Nakagyo Ward in Kyoto, Japan. They've been doing business for over 300 years. They were established in 1717 by the Watanabe family. Their shop is actually only a few blocks from the Imperial Palace. And they get all of their teas from Uji Kyoto, which is very nearby, and the surrounding areas. The brand we're featuring today from Ipoto is their One Pot Tea Bag brand. And the first one I'll be tasting with you is the Kuki Sencha. So just a little background on tea. All tea is made from the Camellia sinensis plant. If you're drinking something like chamomile or a Moroccan mint, um, obviously those are teas made from other plants. The actual tea that makes white tea, green tea, oolong, black, pu'er, is all Camellia sinensis. There's two varieties, actually there's four varieties, but two famous ones, Camellia sinensis sinensis, which is what we're dealing with here. Normally you find it in China or Japan. And then Camellia sinensis asamica, which is the type you'll find in Sri Lanka and India. Sencha is always considered like most prestigious. It's the first of the harvest and they're delicate, but they have tannin. So let's see how it is warmed. So what I like about this one warmed is that there's a lot of tannin and it's kind of just all around the edge of my tongue. And there's a lot of power and body in the texture. So it's kind of covering my tongue in like a dome-like shape, at least that's what I'm imagining. The flavor is very delicately vegetal, but there's this coconut milk essence to it. I absolutely love it. So cold brew. Also the sencha. Again, you're getting that roundness. You're getting a lot of tannin. The tannin is actually a little bit more powerful here. Um, the coconut milk essence is there, but I get it more when it's warm. It's easy to drink, yet it has a lot of complexity. That's what I'm trying to say. And check out that color. It's like a light yellow green. So the next one we have is Gyokuro. Gyokuro is made from shaded green tea leaves. And shading the leaves actually provides uh, a bit more umami content in the leaves themselves. So, warmed. So this one's a little bit more easygoing than the Sencha, believe it or not. I kind of get texturally just um, a smoother, like kind of faster um, feeling going down the palate. The tannins are actually right on the front of the tongue and then uh, it's super subtle in flavor. So let's see cold brew. So this is a very subtle green tea. Um, I get a little butteriness from it. Uh, I'm not getting as much power as from the Sencha, but it's really elegant. And this one is definitely a similar color, but a little bit lighter. Okay, so next, one of my favorites is the Kuki Hojicha. Hojicha is roasted green tea. And again, Kuki means they're using the stems. Uh, so heated. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, there's notes of caramel or, uh, I don't know, earth, roasted nuts. It's just crazy. I love it. If you've never had hojicha, you have to try it. And this comes from a later part of the harvest. So these teas towards the end here are considered a little less prestigious, uh, more everyday drinkers. Yeah, I mean, it's so good. You could pair that with food. You could pair that with steak or um, some really good intense ramen, um, but I might do it as cold brew with ramen. And just to be fair, you can get all the instructions on how to make these, uh, you know, hot and cold on the back of these bags. But for the hojicha and the next tea, they did not recommend it cold brew. I just did this for myself to see, you know, what do I think of it this way? I love cold brew tea, so this is just my thing. So I understand why they're not recommending it cold brew. You get so much of that complexity and character from when it's warm. It's very much more distinct. The flavors are more distinct um, and it kind of seems watered down. Right. Yeah. So next is one of the craziest 
things I've ever tasted. Out of all the realms of food and wine, this surprised me maybe more than almost anything I've ever had. It's called Eribancha, and this is also roasted tea, but it goes through a really intense, deep roasting, and it's kind of a controversial tea. It's a classic Kyoto tea. Oh my God, <laughs> right off the bat. I mean, you can just open this bag and you will realize the smell of this. Oh, and you're not obviously smelling this, but I'll smell it for you. I mean, that's just tobacco, it, straight up tobacco. Like I could be rolling cigars right now. That's how strong it is. Whew. Yeah, when I first made it, I did it um, hot, but then also cold brew. And the jar that I had the cold brew in smelled like Ugh, like, I don't know. I See, I don't want to make it like it's not good. I have an aversion to that smell um, because I've known a lot of smokers growing up. It's so powerful that it actually made the jar smell like cigarettes for three days. And even I put other things into that jar, I could smell the iribancha, but I could taste the whatever else was in there. All right, so let me finally taste it. Oh, pipe tobacco. All right, so on the palate, it's a little bit easier. It's a little more like a smoked charcuterie taste uh, without the meatiness, but that type of smoke, um, I don't really get any vegetal or any kind of uh, tea-like or green tea-like flavor from it. Um, and then when I did cold brew, this is my own invention, so let's see. No. There is a reason they don't recommend it cold because now it tastes like watered down ashtray. This could be amazing. If you like the smell of tobacco, you will love it. Um, if you're a smoker and you want to quit, maybe, um, or you don't wanna quit, but if you wanna quit, I guarantee drinking this will fill the void. I, you know what, just buy some Mirabancha and just try it because it's one of the most unusual things I've ever encountered. Um, but I do wanna show you something else. This is my everyday go-to tea. I make this into cold brew and I use a gallon uh, pitcher and I throw a bag in. Barley tea, you can find this at any, um, you know, Japanese retailer or um, grocery in your area. So the brand, I guess it's called House Foods. Uh, I just recognize it from the box and I absolutely love it. It's really affordable. Um, I'll taste a little for you. It's made from roasted barley and it reminds me of the uh, Sugar Smack cereal with the frog mascot. And it just kind of tastes like that without the sugar. Mm. There's nothing better on a hot summer's day than ice cold barley tea, also known as mugicha. And Ipodo makes amazing mugicha. They have it in this one pot style. I just don't have it here today. Uh, I kind of, tend to drink the other brand um, because it's a little bit more affordable. But if you want the best mukicha, definitely get Ipodos because it's so good. It's so caramel, it's so roasty, and it's different from the hojicha, even though I'm using similar aromatic notes. The hojicha is a little bit more like uh, intense and racy and, and earthy, and the barley tea is just like, mm, it's just like round and, and barley-esque, and it's just, ugh. I don't know, I think Mugicha might be my favorite tea ever. Um, and lastly, I have some more Kit Kats. And yes, so what do I have here? Uh, first one is one of the many green tea Kit Kats. And this one is a more intense green tea um, made from white chocolate and Uji matcha powder. Mm, love it. It's not sweet. It's like barely sweet at all. You taste that matcha flavor. It's so good. And you almost get like a tannin element to it. For a little wagashi with our tea. Ah, I just lost one. This is the hojicha. And I'll admit, I did try this one already, but I'll try it again. First time I had it, I liked it a lot. And then when I got these sent to me, I wasn't as big a fan. It tasted a little too sweet. Let me see. All right, so 
as you can see, it's a brown color. It has that little bit of roastiness, but really it just tastes like cereal with too much sugar and milk. I'm not into that one. Lastly though, I have Onsen Manju Kit Kat. And this one <clears throat> is representing the little dumplings you get at the onsen. And they make that with a dough that consists of rice powder, flour, and buckwheat flour. And it's filled with red bean paste. So let's see how this one is. And it's always fun to have some sweets with your tea, uh, especially if you're drinking matcha, to have a little bit of a sweet you know, dish to kind of contrast that bitterness and that intensity of the matcha. It's so enjoyable and it's a classic element of uh, tea ceremony. So this one has the red bean paste with uh, between the wafers there. Mm. And then it kind of tastes like, like a pudding on the outside, like a, a delicate vanilla pudding. Yeah, I like this a lot more than the first time I tried it. First time I tried it, I wasn't getting that red bean, but now I am. I hope this influenced you to try Ipoto tea. They have a website now and you can order in the US. Um, so it's really easy to get these and they do free shipping over a certain amount. So buy as much as you can and try these fantastic teas from Japan. And next week we'll be featuring wines of Germany. I will see you then. Thanks for joining me and enjoy your day.